In May of this year, an assistant of mine who's been with me a long time, particularly involved in the O.J. Simpson case, and I had the opportunity to go to Las Vegas, Nevada. We were fortunate enough to be granted two reserve seats directly behind O.J. Simpson during this Las Vegas hearing on granting him a potential new trial. As you know, I wrote the book, O.J.'s Innocent, I Can Prove It, and I wanted to see exactly what convicted O.J. in Las Vegas, Nevada, because I was very dubious in the first place. When I listened to that testimony that was brought forth during those five days, I was really concerned that poor O.J. Simpson, for the second time in his life, suffered a, well, I guess you'd call it a bad rep by some people who didn't care, number one, or two, people who particularly cared in seeing that O.J. was punished for what he got away with in, in uh, Los Angeles. I knew that O.J. didn't commit the murders in, in Los Angeles. I knew in my mind, based on my investigation, uh, that in Las Vegas, Nevada, it was nothing but a setup. We found out that the man who set him up was paid in excess of $120,000. My assistant, Phil, and I even had the opportunity to go to the room at that particular hotel where O.J. supposedly committed this armed robbery. The judge gave him back all the items that he took that belonged to him a number of years ago. And there's nobody else in prison for this so-called event but O.J. Simpson. When I heard one of the recordings and the testimony brought out that they couldn't understand what was being said by one of the police officers at the scene, it was then brought out in a clear, defined recording that the officer said, couldn't get him in Los Angeles, we're going to get the son of a bitch here. That concerned me. This is still a free country. I also had checked on Judge Linda Bell, who was the presiding judge in this hearing. I felt from what I'd been told that she was a person who cared about justice. But I also know that the months ticked off, May, June, July, August, September, and now October. Last night on the internet, I looked at one of the first responses that Judge Bell has had in five months after this hearing, which to me shouldn't have taken but a week. It was so obvious during the courtroom. When you looked over at the reporters and then you looked over at the spectators where I was at and then you realized what they were printing compared to what I heard after 45 to nearly 50 years of this business, I couldn't believe it. And this is Judge Bell. According to Judge Bell in her email, she's making a thorough review of each record, all of it. And she claims there's a great deal, particularly 22 raised by prosecutors and Simpsons lawyers. She didn't even cite a ruling as to when she's going to make this decision. How'd you like to be O.J. Simpson sitting in jail for the second time knowing that you're innocent? I can't help but feel sorry for him as I did when he walked into that room. But I'll tell you this, I know he recognized me because the second day he looked directly at me and he was not allowed to speak to me or anyone and neither was I. But my assistant and I both caught him looking at me, and he winked. I knew that he knew why I was there. You see, O.J.'s innocent. He didn't commit the murders. And we're going to prove that in the next weeks to come. We're going to let you make that decision. But if you get the opportunity, pick up my book. Because, you see, a lot of the evidence that we've uncovered is going to shock you. I hope that... As the segments come forth, I'll teach you a little bit of a lot of the things that private eyes have missed, or particularly law enforcement officers sometimes miss. There isn't a week goes by that I don't listen to a book on tape concerning murders. I have over 1,200 of those particular books on tape, and each time I learn something, but I also learn something else. A number of them in the last 10 years refer back to O.J. Simpson. Now tonight I'm going to show you one item particularly, a vial. Now why is this vial so important to me? And it should be important to all the people. It's a vial containing a purple cap. Now why is that important? 
Well, have you ever been to the doctor's office and they drew blood? Either the doctor or the nurse did. And you watch them do like this and they shake it. What are they doing? Well, they're preserving the blood. How are they preserving the blood? If you see a vial such as this that contains a purple cap, there are particles surround the entire glass area. When they shake this vial, it preserves it because of the EDTA that is in surround that glass. It mixes with the blood and preserves it for a long period of time in testing. This particular vial plays a very important case and a feature in something that I'm going to show in the future, in the very near future, that might help solve a major murder case. Keep in mind that a vial of blood may save your life and may help somebody else from going to prison when they're not guilty.